Hi and welcome to a British audio file. If you don't know me already, my name is Taron and welcome to my review of the sound artist's interpretation or tribute to a classic British loudspeaker, the BBC LS35A. Now, why have I said that? Well, strictly speaking, in order for it to be an LS35A, it should be licensed from the BBC and meet the exacting specification that they set down for those speakers many decades ago. It doesn't quite do that. Now, some of you will be shaking your heads and tut-tutting at this point. A British audiophile reviewing a Chinese knockoff of a classic British speaker. Why doesn't he just review the original? Well, I am hoping to do that at some point in time as well. In the interim, I'm interested in reviewing this speaker for a number of reasons. One is cost. Official versions of the LS35A now retail for between two and three thousand pounds. And the price has been driven up by the fact that the materials used in the LS35A aren't that easy to obtain and some of the production methods involved are also quite expensive. The sound artist variant retails for $599 or the equivalent of that when you convert it into your currency here in the UK that would translate to around £430 and that's delivered to your door in a number of countries if you check on their website you can see which countries they deliver for free of charge. All you then need to do is add on import duties now. From what I can understand, that's going to be around 20%. So that drives the cost up to just over £500 here in the UK. You'd have to make similar calculations for whatever market you're looking at. The other thing is that the Asian market has been hugely important in terms of export sales for the LS35A over the decades. In fact, you can go as far as to say that in certain years, it may have been responsible for keeping it going and propping it up. And there's something quite romantic about the fact that they have such an affinity for this product. Now, let's be honest, people looking at two, three thousand pound official variants aren't going to be buying this speaker at 500 pounds. So it isn't going to have an impact on their sales. I see this as a form of flattery. And what do they say? Imitation is perhaps the best form of flattery. And you don't have to take my word for it. Jerry Bloomfield, who actually runs Falcom Acoustics, expressed that view himself. The final reason is Lee at China Hi-Fi. He's responsible for the worldwide distribution of this product and the Wilsington RA amplifier, which I'll also be reviewing on this channel. And it's fair to say that you take a little bit of a punt on a product like this. You pay your money, you have it shipped from China, you pay your import duties. What happens if you have a problem? Well, Lee's built up an excellent reputation in terms of customer service, and that's really reassuring. Enough chit chat, time to get on with things. There's two questions that I'm primarily interested in answering. Does this sound artist variant sound like an LS35A? And for a circa 500 pounds, how good is it as a speaker in its own right? Time to find out. The sound artist LS35A is available in three wood finishes. No vinyl wrap here. The standard rosewood finish comes in at $599. There's a $20 premium for the walnut finish and a $50 uplift if you want the more conspicuous Makassar wood finish. It's a sealed box, there's no port and it measures 30.5 by 19 by 17 centimeters, weighing in at 5.3 kilograms each. In old money, that would be 12 by 7.5 by 6.7 inches and 11.7 pounds. The cabinet is constructed from 12 mm or half inch MDF. If you remove the cloth grill, you'll see that it's secured with Velcro as it should be on an LS35A. The felt that surrounds the tweeter is there to help with edge diffraction and is also a feature of the original. The 19 mm or three quarter inch tweeter is a replica of the original Myler Kef T27 unit. It's certainly easier to say Myler than it is to say polyethylene terephthalate. PET for short. The 130mm or 5 inch midwoofer is also replicated from the Beckstreen Kef B110 unit. It's mounted on the back of the front baffle as you'd expect from an LS35A. The rear of the speaker houses two good quality gold plated speaker binding posts that allow you to connect spades, banana plugs or simply bare wire connections. I want to talk about what makes an LS35A an LS35A. We have to think back to the 1960s when the BBC wanted a small monitor speaker to use in their outside broadcast vans 
and in small studios. It needed to be good enough to do the job as well as something that they could produce consistently so that if you went from one location to the other, essentially you got the same sound. They tried to build initially everything in-house but eventually gave up on the drive units and went to the recently formed Kent Engineering Foundry, now commonly referred to as KEF for the drive units. So let's start with the cabinet first. The original 1960s variant used a 9mm Baltic Beechwood ply. This increased to 12mm in the 1970s when the design was tweaked and the drivers were updated. The impedance of the speaker system also went down from 15 ohms to 11 ohms. The Sound Artist variant uses a 12mm MDF construction. The LS35A was one of the first speakers to use plastic drivers. At the time, paper woofers and fabric dome tweeters were the norm. Now I can't say for certain whether these replica drivers are using the same materials as the original, but I have requested that information from the manufacturer. If I find out at a later stage, I'll post a comment in the description below. What I can say is that the original KEF T27 19mm tweeter was made from mylar, a type of plastic film, and the KEF B110 mid woofer was made from Bextrine. Now that's a material that isn't that commonly found but it's very similar to polypropylene and that's what I think we've probably got here. The crossover in the original design is built from some pretty unique parts, in particular the inductors that are built in a transformer style. Now you can't expect those type of hand-built components in a speaker at this price. And I did get confirmation from Lee at China Hi-Fi that the crossover is designed to perform an identical function to the original, but it's made from modern parts and that's totally understandable. Even the cloth grill on the original LS35A was made from a particular material called Tigan. It was chosen as part of fine tuning the frequency response of the speaker itself. Now I'm pretty certain we probably haven't got a Tigan grill cloth here because again it's not the easiest material to get hold of. What I think we've probably got is a substitute with an identical weave to perform a very similar function. Let's just cut to the chase here. Does the sound artist speaker sound like an LS35A? Well, let me just preface that by saying I don't have an official or original LS35A here at the moment from the likes of Rogers, Sterling, Falcon Acoustic or the various others that have built it over the years. So I can't do a detailed comparison, but I am quite familiar with the LS35A sound. I've heard that speaker many times over the years. I think I'm in a position to be able to answer it in general terms. And my answer would be, on the whole, yes. There's something particular about the sound of an LS35A, and it's all about the tonality in the mid-range. Many would describe it as perfectly natural and neutral. I've always described it as being on the slightly romantic side of neutral. Adjectives such as smooth, rich, and warm are all things that you'd associate with the LS35A sound and that's there in bucket loads in the sound artist design. Where I think it isn't quite there is in terms of clarity and instrument separation. Now don't get me wrong, it's very good for a 500 pound speaker, but when I compare it to my Proax, they're comfortably in a different league. I'd like to think that an official LS35A would be much closer to where my Proax would be. I suppose if I get a chance to look at one of those, we'll find out for sure. How does it sound as a 500 pound speaker in its own right? Well, if you're looking for a small speaker on the warm side of neutral, the answer is very good indeed. When I compare it to my long-term reference around this price point, the 600 pound PSB Imagine Mini, it's not quite there in terms of speed and clarity. That's the PSB thing. But the PSB sounds relatively thin and lightweight in comparison to the Sound Artist LS35A. Both speakers are limited in terms of scale and dynamics. I mean, come on, give us a break. They're about the size of a shoebox and not one of the shoeboxes that you get for one of my big size 11 lumbering feet. I'm talking about the shoeboxes that I get for my seven year old son. In terms of bass, the bass that you do get is surprisingly weighty, certainly more so than my PSBs, although it won't match the PSBs in terms of bass agility. It starts rolling off at around 70 hertz, but it's a sealed box design, so it is rolling off relatively slowly at 12 dBs per octave. And because it's likely to be placed close to walls, you are gonna get a little bit of room gain as well. It certainly feels like it's digging down a lot lower than 70 hertz. I've already spoken about the mid-range. It's rich, it's warm, and surprisingly open for a 500 pound speaker. 
In absolute terms, leading edges of notes are a little bit softened and the decay structures aren't quite as clearly present as they are on my PSBs, but this little speaker does an amazingly good disappearing act. It throws out a wide sound stage and it has even decent sound stage depth. And within the sound stage, the location of instruments, its imaging is spot on. The highs are another little departure from the typical LS35A sound. I've always found the high frequencies on an LS35A to be a little bit rolled off. That's definitely less so the case with the sound artist version. It's not bright, it's not aggressive, sibilance is well controlled, you're not going to find it fatiguing in the long term either. It's more what I'd consider a neutral presentation, especially with the grills off. Now, LS35A aficionados will be throwing things at the screen saying you're supposed to listen to them with the grills on. I know that, but like all grills, I didn't find them particularly acoustically transparent. Certainly there was a loss in fidelity with the grills on, and I preferred the sound with the grills off. Those of you who want a traditional LS35A sound will probably listen to them with the grills on and the highs roll off a little bit more, but it does come a little bit at the expense of clarity. I don't think I really need to say that this is a small room speaker, but I've said it anyway. Ideally, you don't want this speaker much more than two, maybe a maximum of three meters apart, and for you to be no more than that distance away from them. It's going to work really well in a near field setup. That's what the original LS35A was designed for anyway, whether it was outside broadcast in a van or in small studios up and down the country, where it's quite often placed at the end of a desk. It was also quite often placed up against walls. It's a sealed box with a relatively wide front baffle and a shallow depth. It's going to work really well in close to wall applications. It sounds beautiful at low listening levels and moderate listening levels but you're not gonna get around the laws of physics. Those of you who like to rock out and listen at loud levels, there's other speakers that you should be choosing. And that brings me nicely onto associated amplification. It's a very forgiving speaker to drive. It has a nominal impedance of 11 ohms, and I don't think it drops below five and a half ohms at any point across its frequency range. So you're not gonna need a big whacking amplifier with a hefty power supply to deliver lots of current you do need something with a few watts just to get it up to moderate listening levels. I think as long as you've got around 50 watts on tap, you're gonna be absolutely fine. Something like the Hegel H95 was more than enough to get the best out of the Sound Artist LS35A. Its neutral tonal characteristic allowed the virtues of this speaker to shine. It was a similar story when I switched to tube amplification in the form of the Wilsington R8, running KT88 tubes in ultra-linear mode, with I think about 45 watts on tap. That review is pending, so I'm not going to give the game away, but all I'll say is that amplifier was more than capable of making these speakers sing. I tried these speakers with a whole bunch of amplifiers, ranging from £2,500 to £5,000 plus, just to see how they scale up. I used my Hegel H160, my Exposure 21 Pre and 18 Super Mono Blocks, and the ATC CDA2 Mark II and P1 combination. Of course, all those amplifiers drove these speakers fine, but I didn't feel that they offered much more improvement in performance over and above what I got from the Hegel H95. I think the ideal range of amplifier to get the most out of these speakers is around the 1,000 to 1,500 pound mark. I say that because I also went in the opposite direction and hooked it up to my IOTA VX SA3 that retails for 400 pounds. That I felt was a step down too much. As good as the IOTA VX SA3 is, the Sound Artist LS35A is just too revealing in the mid-range, highlighting the shortcomings of the IOTA, which is mid-range refinement and body and texture in the mid-range. The Sound Artist LS35A scores highly from both perspectives that I was looking at it. For those of you who are admirers of the original LS35A or the licensed versions, but for whatever reason it's out of reach, well, for a fraction of the price, you can get something that not only looks the part, is well built, but sounds the part as well. It gives you more than a glimpse of what the LS35A sound is all about. Then there's those of you who just want a good sounding 500 pound speaker that has a tonal balance on the warm side of neutral to place in small rooms at the end of a desk or close up against walls. And if that's what you're looking for, I can't think of anything around this price that does the job better. Yep, it's not for everybody, 
There's people who are going to want to rock out, want bigger scale and dynamics, but this is never what this speaker was really about in the first place. And for all the reasons that I've mentioned, the sound artist LS35A gets a highly recommended from this channel. Well, that's it from me. If you've liked this review, please hit that like button, please share it. If you like what I'm doing with this channel and you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to check me out on Patreon where I offer some additional services and Patreon-only videos. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.